As the Narendra Modi government completes 100 days, this special edition of Agenda brings to you one of the most prominent faces of the government. He's one of the youngest ministers and he's not afraid to speak his mind, which is why Kiran Rijiju is one of the most high profile faces in the government we've had in the recent years from the northeastern region. On the show today, we'll be joined by two superstars from the region, footballer Bai Chung Bhutia, who's from Sikkim, and musician Papon, who's done soundtracks for films like Barfi. They have some tough questions for the minister. Also in studio, we have two experts from the region, editor of Northeast Today magazine and Congress leader Pradyut Dev Barman and activist Bina Lakshmi Neprem. First of all, the minister, thank you very much for being here in studio. I wanted to ask you, you've had your hands full. What do you think was your biggest challenge? Uh, as a minister, uh, you are equally responsible uh, for the achievement or acts of the government. But being in the Ministry of Home Affairs has some added uh, you know, responsibilities because you are dealing with the immediate issues in hand. Uh, some of the issues are controversial in nature also, sensitive, you are dealing with the um, uh, security directly. So that way it gives you much more uh, scope to perform as well as uh, challenges to, to stand up to the occasion. Yes. And you know, I just wanted to know that I think one of the things, if you look at headlines and newspapers, there's so much curiosity about, you know, the leader of your government, about the prime minister. I wanted to ask you, you know, what's it like having Narendra Modi as your boss? Could you just share some insights with us? No, we all working, you know, uh, very uh, in a team spirit. Um, with our leader being Sri Narendra Modi, and he is a very straightforward person. He is very visionary as well as um, very uh, clear cut in his approach. You know, uh, now one of the first things that we, where we saw you, uh, Kiran Rijuju, was in a very unfortunate circumstances in July when a Manipuri youth was beaten to death here in the capital. And I remember you rushing towards to All India Institute of Medical Sciences. And um, after you came out, you said that this kind of thing can't happen in the capital. What was going through your mind at that time? See, incidents uh, uh, keep happening. And Delhi being a national capital, so it attracts wider attention, especially of the media. So naturally, the concern is much more when it reaches out to the people back home. So I want to generate a confidence in the mind of the people in northeastern uh, part of the country that uh, the students and the people from northeast are not you know being isolated in the mainland mm -hmm. so that that is a you know some kind of steps <laughs> action is to be visible from the government side besides whatever is visible we have to take some inherent uh, important steps which uh, i am doing it we have received a um, uh, Base Barua Committee report. That's right, the report which was yeah. set out to look at the challenges that I'm the looking northeast. Into, I'm looking into the whole reports, and uh, I can assure you that um, almost all the recommendations we have received is going to be implemented. I cannot uh, define here uh, presently, but I can assure you that we are working out on that, and it will be implemented uh, properly. Bina Lakshmi, I think wanted yes. to ask. Yes, I think. Um, the 45 million people of the Northeast is really proud that you are in the cabinet, Ms. Rijiju. And you are not 80, you are just about 42. And one of the most handsome faces of Northeast. I'm very yeah. proud of you. The women in the Northeast told me that. Okay. And we have worked together in the Nidotanya case also, where you had really sort of guided us in a very wise way how to get about getting equality for the people, for 45 million citizens living in eight states of Northeast India here. So our question is, is how far will you look into the question of implementing the Besbara Committee and more importantly, the issue of Irom Sharmila, which is not just about Manipur or Northeast alone, it's about the fabric of Indian democracy, which is thwarted by the continued 58 years of imposition of the most draconian form of the armed forces special I think Irom has captured the nations, not just the Northeast people, the nations uh, attention. Do you want to? Well, that is a sensitive subject and uh, everybody must give due importance to any issue related to human rights. There is no compromise on that. There are issues where uh, people take advantage of uh, 
say, rights being conferred in the names of human rights or whatever in the name of freedom. At times, uh, it clashes. The individual freedom or the so society's, uh, you know, rights clashes with the uh, security uh, issues. And uh, uh, there are many elements in the country who take advantage of this freedom and fundamental rights, and they try to work against the state. Is that the, the case state. in Iram's case? No, I'm saying that there are people, you know, no, that, that case. We're talking about uh, case now. That um, uh, Sharmila's case is a very old case. And um, nobody can deny the long struggle she had fought. And uh, as a minister also, I cannot, uh, you know, uh, brush aside the issues which uh, symbolizes by her struggle. Can you tell us, sir, just this much that has she brought about a rethink on AFSPA? Naturally, she has uh, created a deep impact. Yeah. I have to admit that. And look at the way she has, you know, fought the cause for so long time. So, we have to admit the fact. So, there is hope for a lot of people. Definitely. And I am also, you know, very optimistic that I will meet her and, and try to. Well, that's know, a significant. She that's wants a very to significant meet the Prime Minister and definitely she would love to meet you. That, yeah, but definitely. BJP's manifesto had the removal of AFSFA in Manipur, Mr. Rijiju. Definitely, but the, and it, it so be why blind, why because. why now? Okay. A very careful tech. And so that's a lot yeah. of hope coming from the minister yeah. on that particular issue, and that's a significant statement. There. I think let's just take a question now from Bai Chung, who's from Sikkim, and he had this special question for you. Northeast face a huge connectivity problem. I live in Sikkim. To reach Delhi from Gangtok, I start six in the morning. By the time I land in Delhi, it's two to three p.m. And I know you from Arunachal Pradesh, and your place itself has got huge connectivity problem, and so does places like Mizoram, Manipur. Well, that is a very uh, pertinent question. Uh, I have already met all the relevant ministers, railway, uh, transport, communication, all those key ministries who are dealing with the infrastructure sector, including health and education. Hmm. I can tell you that in next three years' time, we can see some revelation. The first initial steps have been taken now. Mm -hmm. So, we have laid the foundation. Mm -hmm. And we are we are making some hinterland highways right uh, in the border of the, you know, China, Myanmar and Bangladesh. So, that Northeast remains the focal point. Okay. Uh, Pradeep, do you want to ask a question? Yeah. Actually, uh, there, are, there are two points which I really want to uh, touch upon. Uh, we've known each other before. And refreshingly, I'm not here from a political point of view, but from a person who also writes for the Northeast today. My first question is that uh, coming to my state of Tripura, uh, Manik Sarkar government, which has been there for the last 20 years, has said that Tripura is a peaceful state. There is no violence, insurgencies at all time low. Why is AFSPA still implemented only in the tribal areas of Tripura then? If it's a peaceful state, I would personally request the center to look into this because I feel that this is used as a tool of demoralizing the indigenous population in Tripura. See, when we talk about the Armed Force Special Powers Act, it's invoked in some of the territories, you know, inside. You know, when you deal with terrorist organizations, they use certain other region as a hideout. So, normally, suppose if uh, your ASPA is used in Assam, then inside 20 kilometers inside India, uh, Arunachal territory also is included. because. Yeah. Well, you operate is something hot pursuit you maintain or you do certain ki kind of uh, action inside. You need to invoke that law so that you know you can effectively deal with the situation. But yeah. at the same time, I am very very particular that <coughs> the rights of the tribals, the human rights, you know, issues are very uh, well taken care of because our standard operating procedures SOPs yes. are there. Yeah. So we keep issuing instruction to the security forces to maintain this part. Okay.